I was absolutely shocked to find out that this woman had an exorcism fan. <laughs> an exorcism. Hey yo everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Luca and I come across this infographics video and today we're going to be learning about the exorcism of Mother Teresa. Let's get straight to it. Mother Teresa, a saint to some and a verifiable hell's angel to others, might have had a big heart, but the fact is it wasn't a very good heart. In 1983, oh, while visiting Pope John Paul II in Rome, it gave up on her when she had a heart attack. Six years later, she was fitted with a pacemaker after more heart trouble. Fast forward some more years and she was in a hospital bed surrounded by people who thought she was about to meet their angels. An archbishop who was at her bedside, however, believed it was more than a biological breakdown. It's the devil. He cried, Satan is messing with this dear old woman. And so attempts were made to evict Lucifer from the rather frail woman's body. We get Ra, is it me yet? Or is hyper-religious people always assume everything has always got to be done with the devil? Yes, a few of you might now be thinking, Mother who? Well, if you were alive in the 80s or 90s, or even before that, you know that she was hardly ever off the TV. This was a woman, the church later said, that not only devoted her life to looking after the poor, but she could also perform legitimate miracles. Yeah, healing the blind kind of stuff. That's why she was made a saint, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. The question is, could a saint be possessed by the devil? Why? Oh, she's a saint. I mean, this, that, like, that makes it even more interesting in my eyes. John, and all will be revealed. She was born in 1910 in North Macedonia with the name Mary Teresa Boyajou. As a kid, she was always fascinated with missionaries, and so when she was 18, she packed her bags and headed off to Ireland, where she joined the Sisters of Loreto, where she touched up on her English and learned about becoming a missionary. It was then that she became Sister Teresa. A year later, she was in Darjeeling in West Bengal in India, training as a nun. Soon, she became Therese de la Sioux, the patron saint of missionaries. She became a teacher in the city of Calcutta, but all the time she was concerned about the pervasive poverty there, especially after the famine of 1943. Three years later, she was heading to the mountains for some rest and recovery after likely contracting tuberculosis. It was on that train that she thought she received a message from Jesus. The message was serving him amongst the poorest of the poor. She later said this, I was to leave the convent and help the poor while living among them. It was an order. To fail would have been to break the faith. So that's what she did. She set up her missionaries of charity and spent much of her time in the slums. Her objective was to look after the poorest of the poor, the blind, the lepers, the homeless, the people who walked around naked in the street and lived off the scraps that people threw out. She I have to admit, I know I said earlier on that like, religious people are going to be a bit mad, but this is the nicest side of religion that I really love seeing. Like, the poorest of the poor, lepers and stuff. Like, come on. You can't tell me it doesn't deserve being like sainted a little bit. She started to get a bit of her name for herself, and while she'd been poor herself up to now, she started receiving donations, lots of them. Soon she was opening up orphanages as well as hospices for the dying, the poor, and the lepers. She became fluent in English, Bengali, and Hindi, as well as already being able to speak Albanian and Serbian. Her Fam, I can barely speak English. This woman speaks English, Bengali, Hindi, Albanian, and Serbian. What? charity became global, but as every TV in the world showed, she spent most of her time in India. Okay, so she doesn't sound like such a bad person. So where did all that talk about her being a hell's angel come from? We don't mean the bikers, of course. We mean a literal angel from hell. Well, she and all the helpers she had were hardly medical professionals, and many of the people that were treated in her hospices needed professionals to help them, not just some woman talking about God. People screamed uh. out in pain, and they didn't get painkillers, but instead heard about Jesus. People were misdiagnosed all the time because doctors Doctors rarely visited the hospices. Some of the poor also received a bit of rough treatment from the sisters. One of the biggest critics was the writer and lifelong agitator Christopher Hitchens. He said members of her order baptized people in secret. They'd be dying and so didn't know what was going on. It was hush hush because most of the people unknowingly buying their ticket to the Christian heaven were Hindus or Muslims. Hitchens said she was not a friend to the poor, she was a friend of poverty. He talked about the medieval corruption of the church and how she told the poor and sick to embrace suffering while rich folks could look good under the eyes of God by donating cash to Mother Teresa's charities. This is what Hitchens said after chatting with her. It was by talking to her that I discovered, and she assured me, that she wasn't working to alleviate poverty. She was working to expand the number of Catholics. She said, I'm not a social worker. I don't do it for this reason. I do it for Christ. I do it for the church. Hitchens, however, rarely likes to ever- This guy's come in with just pure fire and smoke, and he's just there to fucking- Burn down the legacy of Mother Teresa, like, 
Damn. Present his quotes in context, and despite all his fabulous zingers about religion, has never personally visited the poor to provide any sort of comfort or aid. So take his opinions with a huge grain of salt. It was also pointed out by others that Mother Teresa acted like a white savior, a kind of modern colonist, showing all the whites in the West how she was liberating the poor brown people. Back then, there was no Twitter, but you can bet your life she would have come under a lot of criticism to help the poor. There's a certain luxury in criticizing someone for being a white savior while sitting comfortably in your first world home all your life doing nothing to help someone else in need. So again, take those comments with a rather large grain of salt. Okay, so is that why some people thought she had the devil in her? No, is the answer. It was for a totally different reason. You have to remember that she was also venerated all over the world and even handed the Nobel Peace Prize. She also had doubts, some referencing a kind of dark side she felt being pulled toward. She once said this, Where's my faith? Even deep down, there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. If there be God, please forgive me. When I try to raise my thoughts to heaven, there is such convicting emptiness that those very thoughts return like sharp knives and hurt my very soul. Living amongst all that Hey fam, you... That's deep. That shit hit like poetry. Poverty seriously tested Mother Teresa's faith, raising doubts. So is this why she was exercised? Well, it could partly be the reason. You already know that she got sick a lot. She likely had TB in her life, and she definitely had malaria. She had a heart attack I in 1983 while visiting the sure. big man in Rome, and the heart attack she had after that one almost killed her. She had a few good years, but slumming it all her life really started to take its toll. In 1995, she was due to go to Calcutta Airport and pick up a cool 12 million bucks in donations, but her trip was canceled after she fell out of her bed and broke her collarbone. Man, Ooh. this woman had some rotten luck. Or was it the devil playing tricks and meddling with her? A few months later, she contracted malaria and yet again had heart failure. The 86-year-old wizened woman turned to her doctor and said, God will take care of me. The surgeons performed an angioplasty on her and then they gave her a little electric shock to get her heart beating correctly. What happened next? No one talked about. The TV news that had for decades swooned over this wrinkled lady talked about her impending death. But no one had an inkling that Mother Teresa was about to be exercised. But why, why would anyone think she had the devil in her? Well, to any religious zealot, the answer was clear. Only the devil could bring down a woman of such great faith. So naturally, the Archbishop of Calcutta, Mr. Yeah, because, you know, disease and famine don't exist. This stuff reminds me of when you hear that, like, Kim Jong-un doesn't piss or shit. Do you know what I mean? Just absolute batshit crazy propaganda shit that you spew out of their mouths. Henry Sebastian de Souza ordered an exorcism. He was actually staying in the same hospital as her at the time. He was sure her heart problems were Satan's doing, especially when he heard she was having problems sleeping too. He found out that during the day she was quiet, but when darkness fell, she would start thrashing around in her hospital bed. Mother Teresa didn't have one foot in the grave just yet, so she knew exactly what was going on. She green-lighted the whole process and laid back and waited for the priest to do his best. The Archbishop later said she was quite happy about it. She thought she might be troubled by the evil one. The exorcism 75-year-old priest Rosario Strocio stood over the aging nun and began to recite a prayer of exorcism. She also joined in. There were no spinning heads or crosses falling from walls. Neither Aww. did Mother Teresa embarrass herself by using rather colorful language. In <laughs> fact, she just smiled after the exorcism and drifted off into a blissful sleep. Well, if that isn't the most disappointing thing ever, at least want her to swear. That's the one time a nun can get away with this shit. You think, she's a saint, right? There is no fun left in your life. Like, you can't cuss, you can't consume alcohol, or, like, any sort of drugs, you can't have cigarettes, nothing. So I'm sure, like, the one time you get a give, like, almost like a get-out-of-jail-free card, you could have cussed the living shit out of this priest and that nun in that room. If she wanted to. It just feels a bit like a missed opportunity, in my opinion. Rocio would later say that what he did wasn't so special. He said she'd been acting strangely, so it was pretty obvious to everyone that she was getting attacked by the devil. He said this had happened hundreds of times to saintly people, and that's why so many exorcists are there when there's an emergency. After she fell asleep, it was as if God was shining down on her. As her breath whistled through her teeth, for a second, it seemed a golden halo formed around her head. The archbishop later said this about the magical day. She was totally restless. The doctor couldn't understand it. She was pulling all of her wires out. But the night after the exorcism, she slept very well. She was totally calm. Hallelujah. She was saved for now. The archbishop said right up until her death, she was troubled by evil spirits. She didn't have to wait too long until she found out for good if the devil and his adversary up in heaven existed because just over a year later, she was dead. She left behind 4,000 sisters and 300 brothers helping out the needy in 123 countries. Damn. Four years after her death, the archbishop talked about the exorcism in public for 
for the first time. Mother Teresa was still getting a lot of TV time since she'd been canonized, aka made into a saint. For that to happen, you need to prove without any doubt that someone has performed a miracle. You actually need lots of documents to back it up. This allegedly happened. There were documents showing that Mother Teresa had miraculously made a woman's tumor disappear. In fact, she performed the miracle in absentia, meaning she wasn't even there. It I'm not going to lie, Mother Teresa's on fraud watch, fam. That's confusing. This is what her nemesis, Christopher Hitchens, said about that. Surely any respectable Catholic cringes with shame at the obviousness of the fakery. A Bengali woman named Monica Besra claims that a beam of light emerged from a picture of Mother Teresa, which she happened to have at her home, and relieved her of a cancerous tumor. The woman's doctor told the media that no such miracle happened and good old medicine and treatment had <laughs> that tumor. The woman's <laughs> husband said, my wife was cured by the doctors and not by any miracle. The miracle is a hoax. As for all the woman's medical records, Sister Beta of the Missionaries of Charity made them all just disappear. Still, if doubts persisted as to Mother Teresa's sainthood, there were still people who were sure this woman performed miracles with God's touch. In 2015, Pope Francis signed off on a document that said her second miracle was touching a man's head in Brazil. The guy had multiple brain tumors, but miraculously they disappeared when Mother Teresa's fingertips graced his skull. It was later found out by some investigators that the part of the Vatican that researches possible sainthood cases spends over half a million bucks on every case. When the office was asked where the tens of millions of euros actually went, the church didn't have the receipts and wasn't very talkative on the subject. Well guys, that was the exorcism of Mother Teresa. Let me know what you think of that down below because I'm not gonna lie, I kind of agree with that skeptic guy calling her a bit fake. I'm not, I'm not completely on his side, but getting rid of documents and things after she died, it does seem a bit like fraud watch it, you know what I mean? It's, it's a bit suspect. If you like some more of these reactions, comment down below what you want me to react to. I've been your boy, Luca. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, my babies. Peace. Oh, oh, baby. I know you just want to play games with my mind. So are you texting up my phone, girl, for the night? You're just feeling lonely.